I liked it. I have a very limited experience with Superman Red Sun. In fact, before watching this movie, I read it fully for the first time. See, I like this Superman a lot, but other Supermans I'm not as familiar with. Superman, Supersman. If you have read the comic, then the only spoilers in this video are gonna just be the differences between the comic and the movie. If you haven't even read the comic, then the whole thing is gonna be spoilers. So just go do both of those things. Oh, that's a bad idea. <laughs> Whenever DC decides to make these movies that are based on a comic that already exists, they tend to be pretty faithful to the source material. I know everyone hates the opening half of the killing joke, but once it gets into actual killing joke, it's pretty close. Since they started making this line of animated DC movies, Superman Doomsday on, inside of that there's been a lot of, okay, it's this comic, but it's a movie now. Dark Knight Returns, Batman Year One. There's like a handful of Superman ones in there. And so this is basically just the newest Superman title in that run. As far as I know, it's taken the most liberties with the source material, but it's actually, I think, Better? So since I just read the comic, I'm gonna go through some of the differences that I noticed, the big ones that really stuck out. And if I miss any as I go along, feel free to leave a comment below and tell me, hey, dude, that one thing, that also happened. Also, if you could leave a like on this video, that would be so cool. So the opening of the comic, Superman is already an adult, and we kind of find out origin info for him as it goes along. I was glad that they didn't start the movie with the rocket crashing to Earth, because that's kind of overdone. Similar with the Bruce Wayne's parents dying thing of like, yes, we know, get on with it. But the opening of the movie is different in that it shows us his childhood and him kind of discovering his powers. He's friends with not Lana Lang, after which we get a pretty cool opening credit sequence with a lot of reused famous panels and imagery. The opening damn sequence, not in the comic. That was kind of the first hint that the movie is gonna have some differences. And I think that a lot of them were probably made for connecting with Superman more than you do in the comic, because that was kind of a complaint of mine reading the comic. It was less of a good story and more of just a, what if Russia though? Instead, here's this character doing Russia thing. Whoa, you might not expect that also this character do Russia thing. It's something you can't really avoid trying to tell this story. That's what it is. What if Superman but Russia though? And that's fine, but I appreciate the movie kind of went out of its way to, for instance, I have opening damn scene new helps introduce why people like him. In the comic, there is kind of a montage of Superman just doing stuff. The USSR, we have the Superman. He can do cool things. But there's not really a moment, even when he stops the Daily Planet globe from falling, where he really has like a one-on-one -on -one connection with the people before just becoming a weird alien dictator man. So I like that we got to immediately see, here's who Superman has become. He's basically the Superman you expect him to be. He just wants to protect everybody. And then similarly, we have a scene in the comic where he meets Lois Lane in sort of a passing glance. Slow motion anime lock eyes with each other and have like a mental monologue. In this, she kind of like tests him. He saved some people in America. What you have heard of me is not true. I am a good person. And then she's like, hmm, but what about this thing, Superman? By the way, I'm probably gonna end up doing a voice like that every once in a while. And just to be safe, it's me impersonating the, the character from the movie, not doing a intentionally racist voice. I hope that's okay. Jim Krieg wore a military uniform during the sneak peek. I think it's probably okay that I do this. But unlike the comic, there's not just a running, oh my God, I have the hots for Superman. They have an actual like human interaction. Kryptonian. That's one of the changes from the comic that I like. Lois Lane isn't just destined to love Superman because reasons. She's already married to Lex Luthor, loyal to Lex, save for one or two moments. So Lois informs Superman of the USSR's bad stuff. I don't think in the comic that Superman was aware of the gulags and all these horrible mistreatings, but in this it like really gets to him. And we basically completely erase the character of I can't even remember his name. He's Stalin's son, essentially, in the comic. He kills Batman's parents, back and forth with Superman about what's right, what's wrong. He's just gone. And I actually preferred that because it put a lot more focus on Superman. And in a sort of BVSC kind of way, Batman is directly, his anger is linked to Superman's existence, to his inefficiency. Superman did nothing. He didn't know. That's no excuse. As soon as this little kid turns around and starts talking, I'm like, oh, that's Batman. We'll get back to Batman in a second. So all of these things are sort of adding up to 
you, the audience, need to care about Superman, not the comics way of basically just inserting Superman into this world and kind of seeing what happens. And I may be giving the comic a lot of flack, but I did enjoy the comic. It's, I guess, a classic at this point. The movie does Lois Lane a lot better justice also. She's not just Lex Luthor's wife who he never pays attention to. I think that takes away a little bit from more of Lex that we could have seen, because in the comic he's always constantly like in my lab and I'm really smart and I'm playing chess with people and I'm doing this. We get some of that. If I didn't know from the comic that Lex Luthor is like, oh my god, he is the smartest person alive, I might have lost a little bit of that with the movie. But I am glad that Lois Lane got more character. Lex also isn't like super evil. He does a couple of bad guy things. When he makes basically Bizarro and like murders him in order to prove a point. But Luthor basically makes the same mistakes as any of the other political characters in this movie. We gotta kill him, maybe we don't. I also appreciated that the superior man, this, this Bizarro character, had more development than just, it's Bizarro but Russian though. No, he's not Russian, but the, con the overlaying concept. In the comic, he's just immediately weird looking, a stone-faced Bizarro man. In this, he's made to be basically a completely new character. Mark Millar, who wrote the original comic, also did a series called Superior, which is, I assume, kind of where they might have gotten the name from. And like in Superman the Animated Series, Bizarro kind of melts into a more deteriorated form, breaking out of his skin and out of his mind, which again adds another moment where Superman gets to have some humanity to him. Not Lana Lang is also doing worse in the movie than she was in the comic. In this, she's like a gulag prisoner who is going to die any second and then does die, which made me think like, I guess they're just erasing that part of the comic. I think she was the tour guide at the museum, which they've just replaced with a different redheaded woman. But her character's death kind of steamrolls into the biggest change from the comic, where Superman actually murders Stalin versus just Stalin getting poisoned and Superman being like, I don't want to be dictator man. In this, he's like, okay, a change needs to be made. Goodbye, Stalin. I will now run the Soviet Union. Only I can do it best. That's a very different direction for him than in the comic. I think it could be argued that it makes him more one-dimensional, that like he's just bad guy now, but I like it. It makes for a better story, I think. Doing what he thinks is the best for the country, for the world, and we know watching, uh, you're a little bit off, dude, especially with those weird, like, brain control-y things. Maybe don't do that. It's also a little weird that Superman's like, how could you kill people? Don't kill people. And then he just... Uh, he kills a bunch of people. Sometimes you just have to kill people in order to not kill people, you know what I'm saying? Another change is Wonder Woman's sexuality. She had sort of a similar thing to Lois Lane in the comic where she's just enamored with Superman, but he doesn't really show any interest. In this, he tries to kiss her and she's like, hey, no thanks. And I can see that being something that people think is stupid because why change the sexuality of a character, blah, 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 blah. Her reasoning for it, like right after it happens, she lives on an island full of women, you do the math. I don't know, that makes sense to me. One of my favorite moments of the film is when Superman tears down a wall because it's symbolism for in Superman 4, when he uses his wall building vision to build a wall. I thought that was some really nice symmetry. Hal Jordan in the Green Lantern Corps was pretty cool. There are multiple recognizable people. In the comic, there's obviously Hal Jordan, but he's leading a team that I think we get one name drop of Gardner. In this, there's Hal Jordan, Kyle Rayner, Guy Gardner, Jon Stewart, all the like Earth Green Lanterns you'd expect, and then just also a bunch of guys. Phil Lamar is back as Jon Stewart. That was pretty cool. He gets to do a reprise of his, light him up, light him up, light him up. I guess I kind of skipped over the whole Batman part. <laughs> that scene, Batman fighting Superman, Superman under the red sun lamps. That's probably the most authentic scene from the comic. I think famously this Batman is basically just Batman with a furry hat. Not a furry hat, but a furry hat. What if Batman pushed the wrong button? You think you're going to stop me with that? No. With this. They did keep out stuff like the army of supervillains, like Parasite and Metallo and Livewire. Probably so that the focus stayed on Superman and the other main characters. And also probably so they didn't have to keep redesigning those characters. Which is something that I thought was really cool about this movie is that it's in Bruce Timm's style, but you wouldn't know it unless you, like, 
really looked hard. We've been staring at this Superman and that Lex Luthor and Lois Lane for years and years, and we've seen different Tim style interpretations of them, like in Superman Doomsday. It's really cool to see how many ways they can be reinterpreted in that style, because it shows that the style isn't as limiting as some people say it is. Oh, everybody's face looks the same, everyone has the same chin, which is true to an extent. In Superman Doomsday, I look at that Superman and I go, oh, that's just DCAU Superman with a couple different lines on his face, whereas this Superman is notably different. But it was interesting that they, for certain characters, kept basically the exact same look that they had in the DCAU, like John Stewart. They reused a lot of background characters from the DCAU, but I appreciate that most of the time it was in America. I didn't catch very many Russian background extras that I recognized, except for the party scene when Superman and Wonder Woman are dancing. Almost everybody in the background there is either from the yacht that the Royal Flush Gang steals from in Batman Beyond, or the party that Wonder Woman is at in Maid of Honor. <laughs> Which, by the way, if you're watching this and you'd like to see an Easter egg video where we go and pick out all the references and trivia with an emphasis on the DCAU, let us know. So Brainiac. He shrinks the city, just like he does in the comic, but in the comic that's something that comes back multiple times to remind you that Brainiac did this and Superman can't figure out how to save them, but then when none of those other moments were happening I was thinking like, why bother even having him shrink the city? It's obviously not going to be a plot point. And immediately we're at the White House scene and Lois Lane just walks out holding the city. Why did she have it? That's the only part that I thought the comic definitely did better. Lex Luthor can't battle Superman physically, there's no way he would win, so he has to battle him intellectually, and the only way to get to him truly is this like one sentence that he writes on a piece of paper that reminds Superman of his ultimate failure, no matter what he does he can't save the city, so he can't save everybody. And that's a little bit lost, it was a little bit shocking when Brainiac just blows it up, but then that kind of just dovetails into Superman and Lex Luthor must save the day together, fight Brainiac the bad guy. The last little chunk of the story I think was done better in the comic than the movie. Anyway, the movie, as opposed to the comic, is a lot less about the actual politics of the Soviet Union, whether it's right or wrong. It's more just about Superman trying to utilize what's around him to be Superman. And it could be argued that that's not what the original comic was about, but I think it is, and I think that it's done better in animation. And I'm not saying any of this to brown nose these people that I admire who may or may not be watching this video. Because if, if I genuinely didn't like the movie, I would say so. <laughs> Go watch any of our Pleasantries movie reviews over on my other channel, JTS Entertainment. The Batman v Superman review, the Justice League review, plenty of, of uh, stuff to say. So the bottom line is I think I prefer the movie to the comic and I think I prefer most of the changes that they made but I do wonder if it is perhaps a little pompous to change those types of things because it could be interpreted as the filmmakers assuming that there was anything wrong with it to begin with. I think it's more of a how do we translate this to the screen but it's stuff like the Stalin killing that is so different from the comic that it makes me think like we're in a big meeting room We've got a big writer's table, all the different plot points kind of rearranging them a little bit. Okay, so here Stalin just dies. What if Superman killed him? And the guy in the back goes, uh... Yeah, things that I wonder if Mark Millar or other people that worked on the comic would watch the movie and go, why did you change that? That's not what we did. That's not our story. But I'll probably never know. That's pretty much all I have to say about Red Sun. If you'd like to see us do movie reviews like this for every DC animated movie that comes out, we've already done ones on Wonder Woman Bloodlines and Teen Titans Go versus Teen Titans. I had to think about what which order it was. And holy crap, Apocalypse War looks dank as f we'll definitely do something with that the phantom stranger short on red sun special features that was great too it was really cool to see phantom stranger in bruce tim style on screen for the first time he was in a couple of dcau tie-in comics but you, you know you get it again if you want to see more videos on red sun let us know down below australia bow subscribe to the channel please god subscribe to the channel if you just recently subscribed because of last week's batman the adventures continue breakdown and you're kind of like what is this this isn't anything like that video we do plenty of videos like that all the time you'll see another one of those before you know it if you didn't see last time we're giving away a mcfarland toys batman the animated series figure if you'd like to enter the contest to win that hit subscribe then make a tweet or instagram post about something that you wish you saw in Batman the Animated Series that never happened and you hope happens in the new comic with the hashtag subscribe to Watchtower Database. Patreon.com slash DCAU Watchtower. Throw us your coffee money. Help us make these videos better. Thanks for watching. We'll be back on Sunday. Every Sunday. That's it.